Welcome to Beyond the Summit here for Starladder Korea. This is the English broadcast. I'm What Is Hip, and tonight with me is no one else than Coddle Guy. What's going on, buddy? Greg, I'm doing great. I'm real excited. Thanks again for having me. This any, is the big one, Greg. Anytime, anytime. You know, tonight we get to figure out who's going to Kiev, who's going to the land. Our options are Monkey Spanner, Bird Gang, and MVP Phoenix. Any favorites? Anyone that you'd say right now is going to make it? Well, definitely a lot of uh, people are counting on or expecting MVP Phoenix to be the team to carry the Korean flag into Kiev. Um, definitely the heavy favorite in this tournament. Bird Gang, though, they're, uh, you know, also probably second tier as far as favorites are concerned. In this particular matchup against Monkey Spanner, they are 71% in favor, according to the Dota 2 Lounge. So I'm kind of rooting for Monkey Spanner, though, personally, Greg. They did take Got a game off of Phoenix. Got yeah, you gotta love an underdog. I mean, Korea in itself is pretty much the underdog in this whole Star Ladder, <laughs> so well, we're gonna find out who will be the ultra underdog for the Star Ladder series. Yeah, and we're heading into the draft here. So the bands, Ember Spirit, Shadow Shaman, Clinks, as well as Visage, and picked up here for Monkey Spanner is the Invoker, and for Bird Gang, they've picked up the Nyx Assassin as well as the Ancient Apparition. A little surprised to let the Invoker slide. Not something we see a lot of teams typically do. He is a force to be reckoned with in that mid lane. Definitely a lot of tools to work with. Typically that Quas Wex buildup. So Monkey Spatter immediately pulling out the guns and grabbing for themselves. But Greg, we all know Nyx Assassin and Ancient Apparition are a beautiful foundation for a team. Ancient Apparition with that Ice Blast, man. It is unmerciful from across the map. And heavy hitting damage early in the game with the chilling presence just... A great, great uh, grab in itself. And wow, Monkey Spanner with an intriguing Shadow Demon grab Ooh. as their second pick. So here's what I'm thinking. I mean, I think a couple of times we've been watching these Korean games and the Invokers haven't gotten the memo. They've still been playing Quas Exort. And with a Shadow Demon picked up this early, I think it's possible we might, about see me, be, might be seeing that again. I mean, it makes it for an easy sun strike with that beautiful oh, yeah. disruption. So they could soul, be pulling out that too. nice, oh yeah, that nice lockdown, that heavy purge ability, and of course the amplified damage of the soul catcher is very, very nice. So beautiful mini back pocket strat right there. So good call on that one. Yeah, we'll see if that's how they do want to run this. I mean, I just from the experience I've seen watching these Korean games, it's still something that they've been doing. So we'll see if they do carry that through uh, through today, but. Through the bands, like you already Got said, uh, Storm Spirit, Slark, Life Sealer, as well as Dazzle. Dazzle, man, he's just he's getting hated out now. And Ma, I think Ma was saying this the other day. I'm, I'm a little sick of watching Dazzle. Shallow Grave is really the only thing that brings me excitement now from that hero. It used to be everything, but uh, we've been seeing him a lot, and he's banned out this time in the second phase. And Lycan is the third pick for Bird Gang. Yeah, those uh, healing supports were typically never seen in the previous medicine, and now we're seeing a quick rise in Dazzle. Smart band coming out by Bird Gang. They're not so hot with the Dazzle themselves, but, uh, you know, Monkey Spanner have a 3-2 and two record with them, so they're pretty proficient, so good research on their part to study it up. And a quick Lycan grab, which is also someone who's been king of the meta lately, a beautiful rat in itself, and... I remember I was talking about Lycan with a, a player recently, and a lot of teams, or at least what he likes to do on his team, is that when the enemy runs a Lycan, they would consider the thought of maybe running a jungler because we, I don't, I'm, I'm not, it's fading my memory if the Korean team like to run Lycan in, in a particular manner, but typically in a tri lane, let's say especially with Ancient Apparition on their side. Now, if you run a jungler, let's say a Monkey Spanner, that will then pull the attention of the support away from babysitting Lycan and trying to address whoever the jungler may be. And that then allows the contesting lane to lay out the harassment on Lycan, which he's not going to be found of. It's just a thought. Some teams do that. And look at that. There is a jungler in itself. Nature's Prophet right there. Typically might be in that off lane where he might have a bit of a rough early game, but then he can always fall back on that jungle. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting that's an interesting thing to think about. I mean, it definitely makes sense because you can't really let those junglers go unchecked. I mean, it's a possibility that this Nature's Prophet is still just going to be an offlaner, but I think there is still room for uh, for something like a jungler. And Puck is the mid lane pickup here 
for Bird Gang. Uh, this is a hero that I I've I'm really still a big fan of. I mean, we've seen a little bit of a decrease in popularity, but I think with you know Ancient Apparition floating around with someone like a Lycan, Dream Coil is a really powerful ability, and there's a lot of good ways to really take advantage of it. Reserve time. Yeah, and, you know, Puck's been slowly making a rise in return. A lot more flexible usage as well. We've been seeing Puck vary from both the mid and the off lane. Bird Gang, though, already with the Nyx Assassin established. That's their set off laner. And also another thing to note, Monkey Spinner grabbing that Nature's Prophet, which I was praising for a moment there, but picking him into a Nyx Assassin, it's a little sketchy. It's a little bit of a gamble. We'll see if it pays off for him, but typically Nyx Assassin with his Vendetta can make a strong initiate and address Nyx uh, uh, sorry, the Nature's Prophet rather in that offlane without him even knowing it. So, and even against the Ancient Apparition, it's also risky. Someone who can lay out the Ice Blast from afar. So, I'm a little intrigued by Greg. The Nature's Prophet, he's going to be going into troubled times. We'll see if he can, you know, weather the storm and uh, pull one out for him. Yeah, I was thinking that's definitely going to be pretty tough. I mean, going up against a Puck as well. Puck's got a great tool set to deal with Nature's Prophet. You pick up a Blink Dagger, you've got the Orb, you have the Silence, and obviously uh, Dream Coil has a little mini stun in it as well. So uh, there's a lot of good ways to deal with that. So Nature's Prophet might have a bit of a hard time here. But Sand King, the fourth pick for Monkey Spanner, and, you know, this pretty much confirms my suspicion. Uh, I think this is going to be an Exhort Invoker. This is something that we used to see quite a bit. Uh, it used to be more popular with the Leshrac, but I think with the new buff to Sandstorm, a lot of people really do like the Sand King because uh, he does provide some decent versatility. You can just stack some camps and head into the jungle, but you just lead with a Disruption, follow up with a Burrow Strike, drop a Sun Strike on top of it all, and uh, that's most likely a dead hero. No, I couldn't agree more. Sand King with this, that latest buff has a lot more flexibility to work with, great roaming potential, and always be able to fall back in that sandstorm to get a little bit reliable farm in the it's jungle, also, or maybe even help out Nature's Profit. So. Something not to be discounted is uh, it certainly was a lot easier to miss the Leshrac, uh, the Leshrac Shadow Demon combo. I have some very... Uh, very fond memories of watching a LAN at Rochester Institute of Technology and watching some sport players just completely miss the combo. And uh, it, it was hilarious. But the Sand King definitely provides a bit of staying power with that. And Rubik and Spectre are the last ones. Rubik and Spectre. Spectre building up a little more clo uh, global presence right there. So now you got the Sunstrike, you got the Nature's Prophet, you got the you got the uh, Spectre Ultimate. So a bit of a global strike coming out now from Monkey Spanner. Bird Gang round things up with the uh, Rubik, who does have a nice little plethora of skills to grab up in himself. So nice job. And of course, you can't hate on a beautiful telekinesis and good roaming uh, Rubik to get things off. But uh, we'll see how it goes, Greg, as we get it underway. What team is going to pull this one out and move on to face MVP Phoenix after this best of three? You know, my initial my initial thoughts is that, you know, I would think it would be Bird Gang. Uh, they think they have a bit more stable of a lineup, but there's definitely some potential here for Monkey Spanner to just roll over them with this Trilane, with the Invoker, has gone Xort, so I think this is going to be that Xort Invoker, and uh, we'll see if it's enough. I mean, they really have to crush, I think, with this Trilane to make it happen. But let's go over the teams for Bird Gang. We'll see if they can get it done for this game. Ten Bird on the Nyx Assassin in the mid lane. Wow, he's got the brand new Puck cosmetic. JYU on the Puck. Look at those wings. God damn. Fabulous. Fabulous. Great. Wow, it shows the Fabulous. player name when you do showcase the mode now. That's actually amazing. MP on the Lycan. He's still sitting in base. And down in the bottom lane, we've got Febby on the Rubik. And on the Ancient Apparition, it's Sky. All right, on your team, Monkey Spider representing the Dire side. We do have on your top lane, Nace is going to be playing your Carry Spectre right beside him. 4885 on your Sand King. And a fellow babysitter in need is going to be Mr. The Park on your Shadow Demon. Representing the mid lane, we got Karn, the Canadian, now on your Invoker. And bottom lane to round things up, Tootie is going to play your off lane, Nature's Prophet. Yeah, so we'll see how this matches up, Nature's Prophet. Uh, I think should have a fine time in this bottom lane. He might get harassed out a bit by the right click uh, from Chilling Touch from the Rubik right clicks. And uh, we'll see if he can survive. I mean, I think this lane is a lot easier for him than this Nyx is in the top lane. I mean, he's going to have some issues. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, Nyx is definitely one to take a few punches oh, with the help of Carapace. He can try to last his... 
Just, I, thought, I thought maybe there was going to be a kill. He went real deep on that one. Yeah, look, he's already suffering. Took a few licks in there in the meantime. So definitely going to have to assert his dominance in the lane. Invoker on paper has the matchup here in the mid lane, but he doesn't want to be taken too light. Yeah, I think uh, it, it's pretty close. With Quas Exhort, it's definitely a lot harder for the puck, I think. Uh, you... You just there's a lot more consistent damage. The forge spirits are very annoying, um, and there's just a lot of things that can really, uh, really bring your health down quickly. And you don't have too much to spare as the puck. So we'll see how this lane works out. Ten bird still doing okay, just battling away in this top lane, getting right click. This lane is going to be really hard for him between the harass that the shadow demon can provide and the combo and him just randomly dying sometimes with the invoker sunstrike. I think it's going to be a very hard lane for him. We'll see if he's able to make it happen. He's like running out of regen already. Yeah, yeah, he's taken. Look at him. He's just unmerciful. Right clicking him down. Not too worried. Always has disruption to fall back on in case things get hairy. He throws it out right away, right there. Throws out the poison. Man, the oh, the sun strikes. Oh, oh shit. There's a strike. carapace. Ooh. No. Ooh. Very nice carapace to avoid that one, but now he has to make a bit of a run back. Inspector all in the meanwhile. Plenty of space building in that early farm, which she needs oh so much. Yeah, Nace, this is, uh, this is the lane of his dreams. No one should really be touching him, no one should be dealing with him at all. Uh, MP getting a little bit of assistance with the jungling here from the Ancient Apparition pull-throughs and things like that. This is completely normal in the new days of the Lycanthrope, but I do like this, just to make sure he gets a good start. Yep, yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully see what gets up, but I'm getting a little intrigued here. Level 6, Greg, we're going to see some fireworks. The Global Ice yeah. Blast, if they get it off, the Sprout, obviously we've seen the Sun Strike already. They're uh, working on that team communication, making it synergize well. It's going to be a blast. So we'll see if it manages to come together. I'm expecting a lot of aggression. Yeah, I think pretty soon even we might start seeing uh, that aggression that you were hinting towards. But Invoker, what does he have flying out? It is just normal normal boots. And uh, in the mid lane, JYU actually just crushing. It's like not even cool. Oh my god, he let the courier die. That is, uh, wow, this mid lane is not going well. That's pretty devastating. Well, Nature's Very probably devastating picked off the other one. So they traded Couriers. <laughs> wow. Uh, couriers down, back to geez. square one, everyone. I don't know who that's worse for. I think it's... I mean, considering we... the fact that already Puck oh. is oh. well oh. ahead in the CS game, I would say that it definitely hinders the Invoker a little bit more. And, sh and the, poker's, so. the Puck is definitely better at grabbing the runes already for yeah. himself, so I would have to say he slightly favors the uh, disadvantage of ha not having wow. a Courier. I mean, I can't believe how, how different the CS is here. This puck is just destroying. I mean, 16 last hits for him, 3 denies, and Voker only at 9. That's a huge difference this early in the game. And as for right now, 2D has abandoned the bottom lane and went to the jungle like we were kind of expecting during the draft. And yeah. Sand King's giving me a little bit of help with the Sandstorm, but this is space for Lycan. And we've seen Lycans many a time build up a lot of that farm and just barrel out of control. And it will definitely thrive sooner than the Spectre would, but if Spectre continues to get that farm, she can nip that Lycan in the butt down the road. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, definitely something I'd agree with. We'll see. Uh, 2D looks like he's going to be finishing up phase boots before going for, you know, presumably a Midas. This isn't that unusual. It gives you a bit better rotational powers and land you can teleport in, have a much bigger impact with those phase boots. And I have to say, this top lane is going a lot better than I thought for Tenbird. Mostly because Spike Carapace is pretty good against this uh, this whole combo that they've got going on. So, you know, he seems to be surviving all right. And with the Invoker just completely hampered in the mid lane, you know, getting the courier killed, Puck just dominating him in lane, things are not going too smoothly for this, uh, this Monkey Spanner lineup. You know, it's definitely a lineup that can snowball out of control, but it does require not perfect execution, but very, very good execution. Can we talk about the fact that Febby is leading the front as far as CS, though, on this Rubik? He is getting quite the farm as a support right now. He might even go straight for the Blink Dagger? I mean, he if he gets it money. relatively he could get a Midas, I guess. <laughs> he can get it before most Bat Riders. Oh, JYU. In the mid lane. Disruption. There's the Sunstrike and miss. Oh my god, they missed it. Well, JYU's out of there. I think the phase shift kept him alive. That one as well as that haste right now. He turns around, he dream coils, he misses the orb. Can he get this kill on Park? One more right click's gonna do it. First blood for JYU, and Monkey Spanner just getting outclassed by Bird Gang. Yeah, JYU doing serious work in the mid lane as that puck. On paper, you would typically put him as the underdog in this mid lane, but he is just asserting his dominance in the mid lane, snagging the courier, taking it to the invoker, wasting their time on that 
pick off a temp and running it right back and taking the dis uh, the uh, Shadow Demon rather in exchange. So very nice. Yeah, and this is just going really well. And Rubik has decided to pick up the Midas. Not too surprising. Courier is going to be coming up for both teams here. Dares the Dire Courier is back. Now on the other side, they've got their little Penguin guy back. Good thing that comes up right when the Midas is done. So that's going to get flown out to him as well. So his rate of farm is going to continue here at a fairly good clip. We'll see what he decides to buy with it. This is definitely an unusual setup. Bard Bird Gang, I mean, it's just weird weird that they have these supports farming, but I guess Rubik, I mean, he used to be a mid laner, you know, Dendi used to play him mid, and sometimes it would work pretty well, so we'll see what he can assemble here. With a six minute Midas, he's going to have a lot of options. I mean, typically, I would have favored maybe the Ancient Apparition be the one to hold down the lane and Rubik to the pool, so he can get that level six and even that Midas online, because him as a support, when he gets those levels in that farm and that early Ags and that Ice Blast leveled up, that could be devastating early in the game. And imagine if he had Ice Blast already right now, a part of that mid-fight and everything. It would have been a game-changer, or actually for Bird Game, would have made things even more devastating. They Maybe even a double pick-off for him, but regardless... He's still finding that farm. Ancient Apparition will still get that level 6 very quickly for a support. So, Bird Gang, just no threats in their lane, especially on the bottom right now. Yeah, bottom has just been left completely alone. He can do whatever he wants. He's even been farming better than the Spectre, who, I mean, I think CS should probably be a bit higher. He's missed some, and what does he have coming out for him? It's a full drum, so that's pretty good. Yep, it's definitely going to be the dark horse of their team, and I imply that because Spectre's more of a darker character, but there it is, drums on hand, <laughs> Ten Bird to retreat back a bit right there, has to play a little cautiously, but he has to, you know, he's really close to that level 6, just need that one, yeah, more one more creep, give it to me, give it to me, and then he can get that vendetta underway. There it is. So we'll see how Ten Bird wants to take advantage of this, I mean, I think if Bird Gang just continues playing the way they're playing, this game should go fairly easily for them. Everything is just going uh -oh. perfectly, I think. Top lane, top lane, Greg. They're making a move. Timber trying to make a move on the Shadow Demon, but Ada Disruption. Now they're turning back with the help of the Nature's Prophet to TP in, but it will not oh. matter. He's using the dead, but a coil to fly in. J.U. makes an appearance. Shadow Strike to fly out. Nature's Prophet goes down, but so does the Nyx Assassin. Orb to fly back and makes his retreat out. One for one trade, an off laner for an off laner, so we are a bit of a stale. But all the meanwhile, Greg, bottom lane, those supports pestering away at that tower. They're looking to take it, and they're going to be able to get it here uncontested. I got to say, I mean, I think even though they traded offlaner for offlaner, JYU getting some extra experience here. He's got now, now has a full level on Karn, and uh, now finally Karn has those four spirits up, and I think this is what he needed to concentrate on a bit earlier. This is how you get the advantage in your lane as the Quasa Exhort Invoker, and I think this is the first time we've seen him summon them, so... Bit of an issue for him, definitely, and now the Lycan Wolves have appeared, and these are possibly the most annoying things uh, in Dota at this time. The fade time is so short, they can run up, attack you twice, run away, and fade before they even hit them. Uh, supports can actually just die to them. Very, very frustrating to play against right now. Oh, and as an avid support player, Greg, I only know it is unmerciful the way those four spirits can lay down the pain so do you want to make a side note real quick for anyone watching right now the last time actually these two teams met was on the 11th of this month in star ladder believe it or not in the qualifiers and uh bird gang did take that victory so bird gang being the favorites as they are already have a bit of monkey spanner's number but it can all come down to nerves greg this is a big match for him the winner moves on to the finals to face phoenix so they want to represent their team they want to represent their country in Kiev, so expect them to have a little bit of nerves. Yeah, and if you guys were watching before we started up the game here, this is a land, they're in the GOM TV studios, so a little bit of a different environment than maybe they're used to, you know, some of these teams are playing on land often with the KDL, but, uh, you know, it's still very different being a land environment, different than what you're used to, so we could see experience come through here. I think Bird Gang is definitely the more experienced team, so we'll see if that's enough to bring them through, as they're just continuing to assert their dominance here. I mean, it's only two kills to one, but we pop open the graphs, the story looks a lot different. Bird Gang already, with almost nothing have happened, they have a 4,000 gold lead, 4,000 XP lead, and this Lycanthrope, left unchecked, I have to favor over the Spectre, just because he becomes effective much earlier than Nace will. I mean, He's already building towards a book. He already has the Vlads up, and uh, pretty soon he's going to be able to just run into Roshan, take that down for free. And in the mid lane, though, oh, JYU going, to going in on Karn. Tenbert's here as well. There goes the orb. That gets the kill. 4885 is here, but fortunately, 
Not quite enough. The Spectre has even popped a haunt. I'm not sure that this is going to do much. Febby has stolen Sandstorm. Not what he was looking for. I think he was looking for Burrow Strike. Burrow Strike is pretty much the preference. But he's going to make use of this nonetheless. Oh, look at that. He wiggles. That's top tower is under attack. Right, look at that funky dance. Yeah. True Darude Sandstorm fashion right there. <laughs> laying it out. They wanted to get their uh, mid-tier 1 tower, however. I was a little intrigued that Febby was playing the Rubik, but now it seems it all makes sense. Febby is also typically their carry player. Still ahead in CS on that Rubik, doing very nicely. And the like could throw... Uh, MP is typically their mid. Ju has once played supports. So these players very versatile with their roles, and we saw Ju dominate the mid lane. They can all do their parts very significantly. So I'm very impressed by Bird Game. Yeah, I think a lot of these Korean teams are still settling. They're still figuring out exactly how they want to play all their players, play all the roles. Some of the MVP teams are still switching around roster players. So things still a bit unstable here. But it seems like Bird Gang have definitely fallen into a groove. Things are working well for them, and it looks like Febby is going to be going for that early mobility item with the Blink Dagger, and this is just such a great pickup on the Rubik. Positioning is key with this hero. You want to make sure you can always steal the spells that you really need, and uh, on the other side of things, another Blink Dagger picked up for 4885. Typical trade of support. We were expecting the Blink Dagger obviously to come on the Sand King. Typically more positioning for his epicenter, catching him off, same thing with uh, in Febby. But Febby with the advantage of that Midas definitely has a brighter future ahead of him here. Going up to scout out the top lane will be that double damage rune. There's a bit of a small rune report for you right there. Grabs it himself, making a run up potentially to the north. They want to address the Spectre. If this is going to be the Dark Horse for Monkey Spanner, they don't want her to get any sort of relative farm as they make the maneuver up there. Yeah, and honestly, she doesn't have much. I mean, she's decently farmed now, topping the CS board, but, uh, you know, only a phase drum. Nothing too significant oh, she's now. Dead. She's up in the air. Vendetta goes through. There's the impale. Spike Carapace popped as well. Don't even need it. Fade Bolt is going to secure that one. Ice Blast sailing through, but Spectre's already gone, already dust. And now Bird Gang just continuing to get pickoffs here as Lycan has started Roshan, but it looks like he's been had by the Shadow Poison. And Lycan not going with the medallion this time around, instead going straight Necro Book, but feels pretty confident as you can see the sun strike to fly as they, they do gauge the situation, have a bit of a hunch that Lycan might be doing it instead, opting to go for the creeps, but he has to be careful here, running up the hill, he sees it coming, throws out the wolves, we'll try to block him down, pops the ultimate for safety, nice move, and we'll make the retreat. Look at these, look at these wolves, how oh, annoying pain is this? in the ass, Greg, just They're literally biting the ass. They had to commit a lot to that. That's just super annoying. Didn't we personally just play a game recently? Yeah, yeah you died. Playing Coddle and, the, and yeah, and the like to throw wolves just <laughs> ripped me apart. And it's just so dirty. I hate it. Yeah, it's pretty annoying. Well, Bassy phase boots, and now the Midas for 2D. Monkey Spanner, they're going to try to outlast the Lycan. I mean, I guess if they can bring this game to 30 minutes without taking significant damages, maybe that's not enough. But are they going to get that opportunity is the question here. Bird Gang doesn't look like they're going to give them the opportunity. Heavy with another tower pickoff. This Rubik, so farmed up, matching toe to toe with the Spectre, making the TP out now. But uh, mid lane here, Invoker, making rotation over. Sun Strike, they see MP. MP making their tree, gonna cross paths right now with the Invoker eats. Oh, the, ice the cold snap. The puck jumps in with a very nice coil, and immediately the Invoker ripped apart and taken down. Five to one, your new score. And MP now feeling a little more secure, might move on to the Roche. Yeah, he's going back in there. So there's some Treants from 2D. No, he actually does not have enough mana to make the Treants, so just Sprout. And now, oh my god, JYU goes in. The Fade Bolt double kill for Febby. Oh my god, this Bird Gang team is completely dialed in. This is, uh, this is impressive. That's my bird call, Greg. Calling the guy the Flying Bee. Let's go for Roach. Look, look, look at it. I don't, I don't know, that's the chicken, but... No disrespect to them. Oh, jumping by Ju. It's time for uh, Mr. Shane King to fall. He ends up going down. Sunstrike catches, but it's not quite enough. The MP has to pull back. But regardless, this will be a Roshan pickoff in favor of Bird Gang, accelerating themselves even further in this game. Eight and one inherits the goal. Even Febby picks up the ages of the mortar. Uh, the mortal rather haunt flies, but it will not matter. That's, uh, that's interesting. Looks like Febby is going for a very old school build. I think he's getting a Bloodstone. This is super old school. We haven't seen this in a really long time. I mean, if you're getting kills, why not grab? Oh, lifts up. Is, does have Burrow Strike available. There it goes through. 4885 returns one of his own. Pops the Sandstorm, but there's an Ice Blast. He is not making it out of here. Good night. Double kill for Tenbird. I hear a Sunstrike, but it looks like it is off the mark. 
And now, Bevy going through, goes through on Karn, does not care how low he is, Fadebolt goes through, JYU picks up another one, and Monkey Spanner needs a new plan as Bird Gang is just trampling them. Bevy, have mercy, snags the Burrow Strike, quickly blinks in and takes him out again. Well, now Unbelievable game. performance right now, nice please! Jesus. Pop it open it as well, just class! To the class right now coming out from Fabby doing serious work on this Rubik. Very nice. And man, even under the lights of the land, they are performing very well. This is a clinic by Fabby and Bird Gang. The entire team is playing unbelievably well. I mean, they were left to their own devices, so there's really not any excuse for this. But Fabby is just playing like perfectly. Oh, Sunstrike! Nope. Nope. Can't <laughs> kill Fabby. Man, this man doing serious work. Van score, move over, buddy. This is a new Rubik in town. Man, this is uh, bottom lane though. Ancient score. apparition. Yeah, ancient apparition. This is what he does. All right, guys, you go ahead and have fun. We're taking the assertive force. I'm just gonna hang on the sidelines here and throw out my ice blast whenever it's needed. In the meantime, I'll just inherit copious amounts of XP, a little bit of gold, maybe move forward into the Agnum scepter down the line. But uh, yeah, ancient apparition. No real need to be a part of the fight. This ice blast should be more than enough to help out his allies in need. There's a smoke gank coming through. It looks like he's gonna get stuck here. Down he goes. No way he can live through this one. He is gonna get right clicked down. Good night. Well, this Her's is gonna do the it. problem with leaving your ancient apparition alone in the side lane. Is it can be pretty predictable, and they do take care of it right away. So a bit of breath of fresh air right now for Monkey Spanner. Didn't spend his money before going down, and uh, something I do want to note there that he was doing. For a minute, you saw his item on the ground. That was the tranquil boots. This is like a nice new trick that. Uh, since this new Tranquil Boot change, it's how uh, people are playing, you just drop it when you're attacking. I mean, if you're safe, there's no reason not to, and then you pick it back up, get that HP regen right away, and now, oh my god, Ten Birds found the park. He is gonna go down, maybe. Burrow Strike comes through, there's a disruption, is he gonna make it out of here? Is there anyone to help? Now, Nace is here as well, but Ten Bird has escaped the clutches of the Sprout. He's on the run, Cold Snap goes through, Shadow Poison's here as well. Ten Bird, a bit of an overextension, he's gonna go down, but JYU, he's here to clean it up. Dream Coil Orb as well. Now he's out of here, they're gonna run into an Ice Blast. Good night. And now the Sun Strike sailing through. Yeah, that's enough to bring down the puck, but they've gotten quite a few kills in Febby. He's around the back. He's cleaning it up. Tootie's going to go down, and he's arrived as well. The cavalry is here, baby. Yeah, Spectre thought she'd be able to make it out, but nope. Febby says, stay back, ma'am. Jumps right in with the blink of the burrow strike. Quickly takes him apart, and 15-4, to four, they're pushing ahead, controlling the dominance of this one. This might be an early game one, Greg. Yeah, and this is a best of three, so... This is not the end of the line for Monkey Spanner, but if they do lose another one after this, then they will be going home, not going to Kiev. And the winner of this match, again, just to remind you, is going to be going up against MVP Phoenix, who are awaiting them in the finals. So, we'll see. It looks like Bird Gang on a good track here to take a convincing game one. Top four of the net worth, convincingly, not even close. Gold lead has gotten quite out of hand at 15,000. XP looks very similar. All towers. Oh my just god, like they're just the blinking into the base. Karn, he just has to run away, can't do anything about this, just taking right clicks. The wolves doing tons of damage, has to four staff away. And wow, Rubik has stolen the sun strike, he just misses. But man, still has that Aegis, probably wants to get rid of that soon. It is going to be reclaimed very shortly. And now, ooh, blinks forward, Nace, he's going to go down, there's an epicenter. Is this enough to turn the fight around Tenbird? Not dead yet, sun strike here, and wow, that's going to bring down two. The Aegis popped, and now 4885. We'll see if he can do anything else here, but now Febby's back up. And, well, there's a Nature's Prophet going down as well to the puck in the bottom lane. Trying to do a little bit of Rat Dota for himself. Puck will not have any of it. It's been a 4 versus 5 primarily here in the top lane. And, man, they're just feeling very confident right here with the dominant force they have in this game. Jumping right into the base. Now going to town on this tier 3, but Burrow Strike will come out. MP very low. Trying to make a retreat. Ice Blast to fly in 4 a I will be ripped apart in the back end of a Fade Bolt. And just like that, let's see if they can hold the hill. Tier 3 ends up falling, unfortunately. So now... Car in the retreat back. Is this going to be mission accomplished here? They want to hang around for this one, Greg. Throwing out the ice vortex and pretty content. They might be overstaying their welcome, though. Now the Burrow Strike's going to sail through. MP about to fall. Sun Strike going to finish the job. Invoker gets one. Now Febby picks off the Sand King. Tootie's in the back. There's a Sprout up in the air as Nace down goes. That orb isn't enough to bring down Nace. Looks like Febby is going to fall here. So you're right. Overstaying their welcome just a bit, but mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, but a big bounty bag. Going right over in favor of the Nature's Prophet. 1085 gold right now for the uh, bounty of taking down that Febby.
it's a little bit of extra momentum for Nature's Prophet. I don't know if it's enough for Monkey Spanner. Yeah, well, that's going to let him... Uh, Invoker going to finish up a mech. Uh, necro, oh, the or, Necro. Mech. Sorry, <laughs> Necro, not mech. Woo! Different item. And uh, level 2 for the Nature's Prophet. That's where he puts that gold. And now he's just going to continue ratting, trying to make this happen. But didn't work out too well for him last time. And they're falling back onto the good books right now, Invoker and Nature's Prophet. Maybe if they can get the upper hand in one of these fights, they can just steamroll through a lane. But Ju's hanging out nearby. No He's level 3 Necro book, so if he pops it... Uh-oh! <laughs> Quick tag and blink away, but Saking blinks in. But with the help of the orb, should be able to get away. They're on the pursuit, but they can't quite catch Ju, so they pull back. But coming in from the from the north, Tenbird retreating over will make him scuttle back the blink away carapace and just a bit of a tiff a little bit of fussy there great but they do pull back yeah and now it looks like bird gang have set their sights on this bottom lane of racks can monkey spinner bring together defense i'm not sure i mean now there's a sheep stick online for jyu that's a huge pickup for him this is where Ancient Apparition becomes really nice when you're trying to push up the hill. You simply can throw that ice blast up behind the tower if you'd like, and already Monkey Spanner now have to commit or not on making the fight happen, risking the shatter. So already Necrobook's going to town with the help of the Lycanthrope. The big meatball isn't enough to defend. Doesn't look like it as they continue to right-click things out, and a split push coming out from the Nature's Prop in the top lane in the meantime. Oh. But, oh, there we go. Big jump. A nice epicenter to fly up. He is silenced up. But the Lycanthro pulling up the other, jumping in, will manage to rip him apart. They're looking to retreat back. One Quail on Invoker. Unfortunately, H. Apparition will end up going down. Sunstrike will not quite catch on 2D. Fevy now getting caught up with a lot of attacks here on the retreat, but will end up falling. Two for two in the end. Spectre looking to man up right now, but Ju going to town as they trade back and forth. MP eating the tree out, catching him out, but he's really low. Ends up falling in the end. Three for three now. Last man standing, it will look like a Nyx and Spectre square off with the help of Jay. Jay who blinks away very low on life, and man, Spectre holding strong right here. Gonna be on the hunt for Puck as he retreats off. Ooh, back and forth there. In the end, Bird Gang not able to take the high ground. I think they might need to revisit a new plan here. Wow, this is awkward. They're right next to each other. He does have Blink Dagger. Ooh, that could have been a kill, I think. Well, here's the... Oh, God, damn Bird. He's fine. He's fine, but... I think maybe they just need to wait. Cooler Jets. Oh, that was an eight-minute Roshan. That's pretty convenient. Our big, our big oh, friend, back he's back up. Yeah, but, you know, hopefully, Monkey Spanner, who have been choked up in the base here for a little bit, they can quickly get those supports out, maybe lay down a ward relatively nearby the Roche pit, because if they can uh, take advantage of Bird Gang doing a lack of Roshan, they could get right back in this one, especially with the help of all those Necro books. If they're able to take advantage of a big team fight, they can really siege down a lane very quickly, but Bird Gang are not letting up. Already three of them holding strong here in the mid lane, looking to push in. Yeah, it looks like they've just decided to continue the aggression. No one has even checked Roshan yet. They don't have a great way to do it, to be honest. So maybe Lycan will send a wolf in or something like that. But it looks like their sights are just set on pushing in middle. I think they would, uh, would be wise to go stick their head in that Roche pit. It would definitely help quite a bit. I think this time, also, I would hope you like it. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a bit intrigued. This is a neat... It, okay, so, I like this as well. Rubik goes for the, the Lincoln's utility, but in goes Tenbird. He's trying to take down Park. Vendetta, just a couple more right-clicks gonna do it. Urn is gonna... I don't think it's gonna quite finish the job. And now, one tower has fallen. Aghanim's online for the Ancient Apparition. Here's the haunt. The Radiance is picked up by the Spectre. Is this enough to make the difference? He's gone in the back, maybe try to take down Sky. But now MP has had his room taken down the melee racks. Now Febby moving forward in the back. Tootie battling it out, but looks like he is going to go down. Oh, objective complete, though. The Rax ends up falling. They created the space for the lock. Oh, we get it, but wow, on the way out, Febby might be in trouble. Coil, nice on three. Febby eats Sunstrike, but not quite enough. But that Coil, man, lock him down. Orb to fly out. Shadow Demon ends up getting ripped apart, but Spectre on the run back. Gets Febby in the end, and the killing spree really enough for coming out for Nace, but Nace, though, quickly might be taken down with the help of the Wolves and Lycan from Spencer in the butt on the way up. We'll be able to get away quickly. Turns their attention and takes down the Invoker, and will clean up the rest of the racks in the mid lane. One of the most aggressive buybacks I've seen in a long time by MP. VOTs straight back in. Finishes the racks. Top lane racks going to fall as well. And now I think that that's done. They're going to go take that Roshan and just solidify 
They're a huge advantage now. They paid a lot for it. They, it cost them a lot of deaths, a buyback as well. But in the end, well worth it as they are able to take down the racks. And Puck just making a new appearance, especially all day today, apparently in the, the Navi Alliance series earlier. This Puck, it was all about the Puck. It was all about the coils. It was all about making it happen. And man, the Koreans just making it work for themselves as well. That coil was very nice to lock them down that mid lane and managed to help secure the first set of racks in this first game. So Bird Gang feeling very happy about this one, decided to pull back and maybe now might slow pace it just a bit. Maybe think about moving in and grabbing that Roche as they're comfortable doing it. But this is, I say, that mid lane. Very over aggressive Tenber gets caught out with the Burrow Strike. Sprout temporarily helps on Sand King, but uh, it will not matter. They end up taking him down. Jesus, he buys Quick back buy as back. well. <laughs> oh my I got money, God. why not? Right? Like I'm rolling it, I still got 1600 gold. Let's go. Very cheeky move there, though. He dived forward, used by Carapace to cancel uh, the Sandstorm, and now he's gone in on 2D. There, he follows it up. There's an Ape Rash, there's an Ancient Apparition here as well, and 2D gonna try oh. to make it out. Nope! <laughs> that was hilarious. Instant redemption coming out for Nyx Assassin. Worth it on the buyback, I guess, man. Sprouting yourself will not help when you have a cold feet on you. Yeah, that did not quite work out for him, and now it looks like MP just... He doesn't care about Roshan, man. He just wants to win the game. Yeah, they want to end this one quick. They're feeling pretty confident. They want to really hit Monkey Spinner where it hurts. Even going into game two, they want to feel like they have all the morale they want on their side. But uh, they're definitely sweating it out for this game. And I think this is a smart move. Even Monkey feel very defeated in this one. Make them sweat. Make them work for it. Make them, maybe make them fatigue a bit. So that way when they go into the next matchup, you know, they're not as... You know, they're not as hyped up and ready to go, so I'm not going to be surprised if Monkey Spinner tried to draw this one out, even if it looks very grim. And they do have the Spectre with Iridians, so, you know, there's still a very, very small yeah. possibility that the game can turn around. It's a very small one, but, you know, I think they're going to play this till the last Rax is down there. The Meteor is going to sail through, but in the back, Tenbird just goes so deep. NP coming through. There's the Epicenter. Is it oh. enough? It's going to take down the Lycan. Double kill, though, for the Ancient Apparition. Two have fallen. And now, in the back, Tootie, he goes down. No way he's going to live through this one in the end. But, oh, they actually do push him back, JYU. Even after the Sheep, it's not enough. And, man, Bird Gang, they're just pushing their luck here. They're pushing their luck right into a Spectre, who definitely will be controlling the far late game in this one. That's probably why they want to assert and take it out quickly, because if that Spectre gets out of control, it could get bad. She's on the hunt right now. She smells the bird. But will not be able to catch the carapace, will stall it out long enough, and she will have to make a move back. So, down one set of racks, Ray. How much more time do they need before the Spectre can take control of the game? Like 20 minutes. A long time, I think. <laughs> can maybe, they get... maybe less than that, but a lo it's a while. At least 10 minutes, I think, because really, she needs, like, Heart Manta before she can just start killing everyone, I think. But, I don't... This Roshan is just sitting here. Do they just forget that this existed? I think they just want to end it. I mean, two racks are down. They're so close to those megas. It just takes one nicely done team fight with the help of the Necro book and with Lycan on your team. They saw Kiros. I'm sure he has that complete or nearly complete. Once he gets that, it's those those racks are gonna melt. So I think they're just getting a little more greedy on just kind of getting those megas in. So I don't think they're taking it over. Well, we'll see if it works out for them. They definitely have a huge advantage here. Febby dies in the mid lane doing something that I can only assume is very stupid as he appears yeah, to have died I, in the base <laughs> just kind of lingering around there in the mid lane wasn't really counting on all these sentries to be popped up from right, uh, MP is space, wisened but... up he's like alright this is just stupid let's just get Roshan and finish the game yeah, definitely want to make this secure this one out because if they lose a team fight and Spectre gets a hold that, of that uh, Sweet Aegis then it could be pretty Pretty rough for him, but now with the help of the DD, they should be able to get this one quick. Yeah, they're gonna knock this down real quick. I'm a little surprised that there's no medallion anywhere still. I think that's probably worth picking up. But all of Monkey Spanner are surging forward. Our bird gang gonna try to do this. Maybe this is the reason that they decided they didn't want to Roche. I mean, I guess they do just get destroyed by Epicenter Invoker, but it doesn't look like they can move in far enough. But there we go. This is the time MP. He's coming back out with another manager rune. The Epicenter sailing through. JYU about to go down. And oh my god, Monkey Spanner in the pit. Monkey. I guess this is why Bird Gang did not want to do this. Ten Bird, he's going to go down as well. 
Very nice, and Nate's moving right back, taking out the Roshan, taking it for himself. This is going very nice for Monkey Spin, exactly what they wanted. A very lackluster Roshan commitment coming out, and with the help of the, all that global presence, the uh, Nature's Prophet, the Haunt helping out, and man, Monkey Spin with a little bit of breath of fresh life, and they do manage to catch out the Ancient Apparition as well. Four for one here, Greg. Monkey Spinner with two racks down. They're not going to give this one up. I mean, they did Roche while the entire team was live. So I guess that might just be what you expect to happen. But there was definitely some opportunities when the whole entire Dire team was dead and Roshan was up that they probably could have taken advantage of. I mean, right when they took the racks, the Lycan walked right by it. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely costing them now. Nace now with the, uh, the Aegis... I mean, the thing is, is that Burgang is playing on a knife's edge because, or uh, Monkey Spinner rather, because if they lose one fight, the game is just over. Yule's up in the air. Is 2D gonna be able to make it out of here? Nope. No is the answer. No, he's not. Well, you know, bit of a bad uh, <laughs> positioning coming out. Nature's probably feeling uh, a little too overconfident pushing out after the back end of that Roshan uh, fight, but uh, Burgang saying, hey, 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 just remember. We still control the map. We still control most of the base here, and we uh, definitely control the network. So don't don't uh, get a little overconfident here, but definitely gonna look to push the hill here, pressing all the lanes, and then potentially a rotation to the bottom. And something I do want to know is that Nature's Prophet has a blink dagger. This is when you know a new buffed item is very good. When there's just it doesn't matter what hero you're playing or what role you're on, it's pretty much always useful. Pretty interesting. I guess he's going for that like tinker style, like push the lane out quickly, blink yeah, off to the side, TP that. away. Yeah. You know, a bit of a safety net for himself, but it didn't work too well there in the top lane. Not, no, not great, not perfect. But MP is he going to get caught here? Pops the shape shift isn't enough. The rest of his team is here. Ice blast going towards top, but it doesn't matter. Nace has arrived in the mid lane. Light can get a fall by the help of the purge, and now Sky going to go down as well. Our monkey spinner actually going to turn this around? Go up, but Febby's here. There's the burrow strike. Down goes the Aegis. Do they have enough to do it again? It doesn't look like Bird Gang is interested in it. On the meanwhile, further up in the lane, they do land a very nice two-man coil by Ju, but nothing really to follow up, and they will be able to escape and make it out of there. So I like the idea Monkey Spinner take it right to Bird Gang before they have the opportunity to make it to the base, initiate on, do take down the precious Lycanthropin. Man, they're, they're still fighting hard. They, their backs may be against the wall, but they're swimming. They're swinging. If they manage to catch Burgang on the chin, man, they could take this game. Yeah, this is becoming way closer than Burgang ever should have let it happen. I mean, the net worth now looks completely different, but oh, with the support up in the air, is this enough to open up a window of opportunity? A great carapace stops for it. A five disruption going to go through, though. And now coming through in the back is Nace as well as oh, Tui. Picking off 10 Bird. Man, Burgang. This is not good. Not good at all. They're doing these weird little this engagements inside the base. And yeah, I mean, they can't take down this team easily. You have that dis disruption on the end. All the help of that lockdown, the burrow strike. It's not going to be an easy pickoff. Not as easy as you think it might be there, Mr. Bird Gang. So, uh, <laughs> they throw away another one. 32 to 24 is the score. It looks very promising for Bird Gang here, but this specter is slowly beginning to take her own. Yeah, and I mean, look at the net worth, the nature's profit, the invoker. Both quite high up there, and there's the Manta, as well as, uh, you know, this is this is what the Spectre starts to need to get. I mean, if she's able to finish up a heart as well, things are going to get ugly. Very, very ugly for Bird Gang. Uh, Ju does obviously have that sheep, so the CC will help against the Spectre, but Spectre's one of those heroes. I mean, she may not have a BKB, but she is very elusive and very tricky to try to lock down and get a hold of. So it definitely could be very crucial here for J.O. to try to land a proper coil and catch out the Spectre and be able to take her down before she gets out of control. Smoke to fly out as they rotate all the way up to the top lane here. I guess trying to maybe just push it out a bit, but their targets should be set on the bottom set of racks to clean it all up and bring in the Megas. I think their idea here is they're going to push in top with the supports and then Lycan going to swing through the bottom and just clean mm -hmm. everything up because if you let top get pushed in, then you start losing tier 4 towers, which is just as bad. And now they're uh -oh. looking for Nace. Are they going to get him? JU needs to move forward there. There it is, the cold feet. Does he have the hex? There it goes. And now Nace is going to be able to make it out of here. It doesn't look like it. No, he goes down. Sunstrike falling through. 2D trying to do all he can. He's up in the air. The Necro Creeps coming through trying to take down Sky. JYU here as well. MP has come over. Is this what Burgain needs to finish up this one? Down goes an Nature's Prophet. Tornado flying through. And here we go. They're in oh, pursuit. Yeah. Two are down for Monkey Spanner. It looked good for a bit. Cold Snap tailing through. Park falls as well. 
and I think this might be what it needs for Bird Gang to finish this one up. And this, I mean, one thing I want to say is that this Invoker, I don't think, has paid off in Quas Exhort. I think, you know, you have to be ahead. You're relying on snowballing. It didn't quite happen. But imagine how good Tornado EMP would have been in these defenses. Oh, the crowd control would have been beautiful. I mean, I definitely understand where they're coming I mean, he's from. They definitely over now. He's got synergy, and but, uh, but too little too late right now at this point. Tornado to fly. There it is, Greg, on par. The EMP to fly, but it will not be enough. The Rex should end up coming down. There it was no buyback on Spectre. Actually bought the Manta. Ice Bass to fly out. They're going to get all they can. Aces and Invoker. Yep. Jumps right in, MP eating a lot of damage here, but only down to half. BKB to fly by Ju. there he goes to the coil. With the help of the silence, they pull out the Sand King, but they're not going to be able to catch him. Fevy does lose the Lincoln Spear. Blink back right now, as this is the last hurrah to get the Rax and take it down. Nature's, ooh, they're laying down right clicks. Can they get MP? They do! They take down the leg and throw quick buyback from him, so expect him to make the quick rotation up. Now pushing through, further back out into the jungle. Ten bird on the retreat back. Spectre is back with the help of the hunt. Now reigns dominance to trying to take out the rest of the bird gang. Pushing on through Nature's Prophet, very low with the cold feet. Retreating through, back in the jungle. Ooh, Timber, body blocking, Ooh. going on through. Retreats back, Ice Blast, Self Sprout, kidding it away, no! The Impale flies and catches him. Coil now, catches on the Shadow Demon. Jayu now moving on to a dominating streak. A bit of a tift, a rumble in the jungle, if you will, Greg, as they and run by the secret trap. In the bottom lane, MP and Nace have just been going at it. MP couldn't stand up for a bit, but now Nace is the one who's on the run. And we'll see MP. No, he is going to get caught out. It's on strike. Going to finish that one up. And man, rough and tumble, battling back and forth. Bottom lane skirmishes as well, but a tier four falls through it all. And Bird Gang getting closer and closer to what they needed. AA ulties coming in. Oh my god. Good night, Karn. Oh, right in the face. <laughs> Snowballed in the face. He gets up going down. Thank you. No bite back for nice, him. But he'll take that one. Oh. Oh, he'll take it. That, I mean, that invoker has no no buyback at all. I mean, there's not really enough of Bird Gang around to really make the commitment make it happen, but he get caught up in the mid lane, J.U. Careful here. Does manage to make the retreat out of doing what Puck does best and steps quickly away, but we've seen them make those tips before and get caught out, so they definitely have to be a little more cautious. Back and forth and back and forth. The Gold Graph now starting to rocket up at advantage again for Bird Gang, but it hasn't seemed to be enough so far. And oh, Ten Bird realized that he has found out. Febby gonna knock down those creep, but is he actually gonna die for this? Playing extremely aggressively still. He actually has picked up a maelstrom to help deal with all of the treant creeps, the necro creeps. Just start to clear those things out. The illusions. This is actually a pretty smart pickup. Weird, but smart. I like it, man. Nature's Prophet trying to get that tower. That pesky tier one mid lane tower still stands for Bird Gang, and he wants it, but he can't quite get it just yet. Still holding drawn, defending a conda line now coming out from Bird Gang. On the hunt, the Bloodhounds, we've released them. We're trying to catch this Nature's Prophet, who's still lingering in the woods nearby, taking out some Mud Golems, but uh, should be able to evade any sort of danger as he blinks and will make the TP. Yep. And, uh, what the hell? He just bought another Necro recipe. Interesting, interesting. Necro 4 Greg, new meta. <laughs> Necro 4 new meta, A, ulti, gonna come through. Oh, he does not toss him back for the damage, but does not matter. Easily able to take that one down, and now he's dead with an extra Necro recipe in his stash. I uh, can only assume that was not supposed to be that. I'm too sure what happened there. Nyx Assassin laying out a bit of harassment on Nace on the retreat back, but careful, might get caught out the Soul Catcher in the Purge. Catches right on him, this Nyx is going down. What are Bird Gang doing? I don't know. I don't know. They're just, just giving life to Monkey to get back in this one. Just a little feed here and there. Then we'll finally consider going for the bush. But uh, are they kind of stalling things out in the meantime for the next for the Roche here? I mean, they're around a the pit. They have to be scared as hell to do that again. Like, that did yeah, not work out at all for them last time. Now, Great. they're going to move forward. Is this going to be what does it for Bird Gang? It might be. Oh my god, that is the opposite of what Monkey Spanner wants to happen. And three go down for basically nothing. Oh, that is bad. That is very, very bad. And now the Raxes are exposed. No one here to defend them. The Spectre's healing up, and I think this oh is going to be yeah. Megas. That's Monkey easy, Spanner going to come through. Haunt goes through. They're going to try to finish them off. This is the last stand for Monkey Spanner here in game number one. Down go the Rax. Up come the Megas. And you have to imagine, with the Spectre dying, he buys back. But I think, hear that? That was the door closing this game. Just about over, finally, as Bird Gang have finally managed to maybe end this one.
But still, Monkey Spanner fighting. Okay. Tootie gonna go down. And only the Spectre remains. And there's the GG. Yep. yep. There it is. So, <laughs> valiant effort there in the end by Monkey Spanner. Definitely helped. A little bit of throwage coming out from Bird Kang. The Spectre could quite get to that level of being able to make it happen. But regardless, in this best of three, man, the Bird Gang take out the first win. One more. And they can move on to the finals to go against MVP Phoenix and hopefully move on to Germany and get a piece of that 203k prize bowl. Yeah, and Bird Gang, you know, they took a while to do it, but in the, in the end, they are able to lock it up. So they secure game one. Are they going to be able to bring this in two? I don't know. I mean, Monkey Spanner showed some signs of life there at the end of that game. But unfortunately, it was not quite in time as it really came online when two Raxes were down. On screen here we see Tenbird, maybe he's uh, contemplating his life choices during that game as he fed away a couple of kills, but it all worked out in the end for the Bird Gang. I'm what is Hip. you can follow me on Twitter at what is Hip TV, and with me tonight is CoddleGuy, follow him on Twitter at CoddleGuy. We'll be back with game number two in just a couple of minutes.